kasih setiamu nyata bagiku Hikmat kebajikan tersedia bagiku Sebab Allah sanggup Lepakan segalanya Dan anugerahnya Sangat besar bagiku Aku diberkati Aku dilempahi Karena alat sanggup Untuk menyediakan Aku diberkati Aku Good morning and blessed day to all of you, brothers and sisters in the Lord. We thank God for another opportunity for us to go together through the living word of God for today. Before we read God's word for his message to us today, shall we pray? Our dear loving Heavenly Father, we worship you, we praise and thank you for your love, for your care upon each one of us every day. We pray that as we look through your word for today, help us to under understand what you are telling us. Pray that we may humbly submit to the leading of the Holy Spirit, that we may live in obedience to your word as food for our spiritual life. As we go through challenging days, Help us to remain faithful to Jesus, who is our faithful Savior. We pray that you help us, Father God, to be prepared and keep watching for the coming of Jesus, our Lord. In the precious name of Jesus, our living God, we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, in the Lord, the title of the, the message for us today is Standing Firm in Difficult Times. This is taken from 2 Timothy 3 verses 12 to 17. Standing Firm in Difficult Times. We'll read the six verses all through ones verse 12 in fact everyone who wants to live a godly life in christ jesus will be persecuted verse 13 while evildoers and impostors will go from bad to worse deceiving and being deceived verse 14 but as for you Continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learned it from, and how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Verse 16. All Scripture is god breath and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So from these uh, six verses, we can reflect on how it will help us to go through these very difficult times. Throughout this year, we have witnessed and gone through very difficult and challenging, challenging times caused by the ongoing pandemic. The effects of this pandemic have changed the way we do things, the way we live, the relationship we have with others, the fellowship of gathering together in the church and homes have been greatly restricted. Social gathering and fellowship have been greatly restrained. And we know that what we used to do at work, in the office, in the church and public places have been 
controlled. There is so much fear and anxiety. People are fearful of traveling and moving around to other places. As a result, many businesses have collapsed and people lost jobs. People face so much uncertainties. As we ponder back to what we went through the last nine or 10 months, one of the most heavy and very sticky questions is that we, we cannot run away from is how long will these difficult times last? When will it be over? Is this only the beginning of the birth pains mentioned in Matthew 24 verse 8? So how should we live through these difficult times? So today from our reading, from the six verses we have just read from 2 Timothy 3, 12 to 17, God is telling us through Paul how we should live through these difficult and challenging times. So uh, let us look through the six verses one by one. We start with verse 12. We are reminded that everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. It is not like you may be, but we are reminded that everyone will be persecuted. This means that we live in a fallen world and there are many challenges that face every believer because Satan the devil is an enemy to every child of God who have accepted Jesus as their Lord, God, and Savior. However, challenges and difficult times are necessary for Christians at every level to grow in grace and mature in faith over an unspecified period of time. There are some who would slip in and out of carnality and worldliness for many years, causing their growth to be stunted. And also sadly, many believers, many Christians, although they have been saved by the grace through the faith in Christ Jesus, they refuse to move past the elementary principles of the Christian life. They choose not to face challenges and move on from victory to victory in Christ. In other words, they remain in spiritual infancy and keep repeating the first stage of their Christian faith over and over again without pressing on to spiritual maturity. Many are falsely taught that becoming a Christian will secure a quiet life with prosperity and many earthly blessings without problems and challenges. That is a wrong teaching. In this fallen world, we have a spiritual enemy who prowls around as a roaring lion or appears to us as an angel of light seeking to devour, to destroy, and to deceive us. Jesus clearly told us that in this world, those who believe in him would suffer persecution and pain. And Paul expands that this truth by adding that all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will surely be persecuted. James encourages us, however, by explaining that those who persevere under trials and persecution are on the journey to maturity. They will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. And he encourages us to consider it all joy when we encounter various trials and persecution. We read this in James chapter 1, verses 2 to 4. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance, 
Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. So now we go to verse 13. Verse 13 we read, Evil doers and impostors will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. Those who are doing evil are being used by our enemy, the devil. In 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 9, Paul warned Timothy of the difficult and terrible times that would happen throughout the church history and increasingly in the last days. He said, people will be lovers of themselves, lovers of pleasure, instead of God. They would be abusive, unforgiving, and having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. They are being used by the devil to deceive and being deceived. There will be many false teachers that would lead people astray. Just as Paul warned Timothy, Christ warned his disciples as well. Satan would plant tares among the wheat and yeasts in the flour. There would be people in the church who would be deceived by believing false teaching and false doctrine. That is why we need to pray always in these very difficult times that we may not be deceived. Because of this reality, Many who are deceived and continue to being deceived by the lies of the devil, they become angry at God. They become bitter at the church and some have fallen away from Christ altogether. These are very important realities to be aware of in order to protect ourselves and persevere. How can we stand in these last days and the last time let God speak to you daily from His Word and talk to Him. Talk to Jesus constantly in prayers, giving praise and worship to Him. The third verse, verse 14, But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learn it from. You who are in Christ, continue in what you have learned. Live the life of godliness so that the word of God in you helps you to grow more and more like Jesus. We read in John chapter 15 verses 4 to 5, Jesus said, Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. So verse 15, from young you have known the Holy Scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. We read also in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 14, For if we are faithful to the end, trusting God just as firmly as when we first believed, we will share in all that belongs to Christ. So, brothers and sisters in the Lord, Make time and choose to linger with God in prayer every day. Do not allow anything, not even good things like family or ministry to take the place of time with God. If you ne neglect Him, you will find yourself spiritually dry. You will not lose your salvation, but you may miss out on some of God's blessings. Keep away from those who can influence you to become so worldly that in the end, you have no more time for Christ and His Word. And verse 16, All Scripture is God-breath 
and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. We read in Psalms chapter 12, verse 6, The words of the Lord are pure words, like silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. In Jeremiah 15, verse 6, we read, Your words were found, and I ate them, and your word was to me the joy and rejoicing of my heart, for I am called by your name, O Lord, God of hosts. And Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, It is written, Men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And finally, the last verse, verse 17, So that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Just like our physical body that needs food to remain strong and healthy, our spiritual body also needs spiritual food to grow stronger and healthy. Our spiritual food is the Word of God. For our spiritual body to grow strong, we need to live in obedience to the Word of God and let His Word transform our minds, our thoughts, and changing our characters to be more like Christ. Persecution and challenges are the work of the devil trying to discourage us from every good work. But we need to live the life of Christ through His Word in us so that we can live this good example and the good work that God has set for us. Often, Satan uses the same technique of using people as bad example to deceive the world. He seeks to corrupt the world and the church. Instead of godly examples, he displays and promotes ungodly examples in the media. If you look at those who get the most attention in our cultures today, it's usually the ungodly TV stars and actors, musicians and athletes with no morality or conscience, or TV preachers who focus on money and prosperity, but they don't preach the word. They are paraded and promoted to affect the culture in a negative manner, leading others to similar pathways. In these last challenging times, we need to stay close to Jesus by living in His Word. We need to focus both on God's faithfulness and His faithful man throughout the scriptures in the Bible as our example. How God persevered, preserved them, He will keep us also through these difficult times when we remain in Him through this difficult moments. So in conclusion, Satan will persecute us and always tempts us to feel alone and hopeless, but we are not alone because God has faithfully preserved his saints. Even in these dark times, he will look after us, he will preserve us. We need to recognize this to stand firm and remain faithful to Jesus our Lord. In 1 Peter chapter 5 verses 8 to 9 we read, Be sober and alert. Your enemy the devil like a roaring lion is on the prowl looking for someone to devour. Resist him. Remain strong in your faith because you know that your brothers and sisters throughout the world are enduring the same kinds of suffering. We should resist and stand firm against Satan's attacks because we have a family of believers around the world enduring the same suffering as well. Though many in the church possess us only a form of Christianity but no reality in their lives, there are many who follow God faithfully. 
And if we are going to stand in terrible times, we must remember them, pray for others, and we must resist the devil, and then he will flee, go away. So remain faithful, continue in God's word, and faithful in prayer. In closing, shall we pray? Dear God, our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word today, reminding us that we will face tribulation and persecution from the spirit of darkness while we are on this earth. This is because we are your children, bought and purchased through the perfect sacrifice of your Son, Jesus Christ. Father God, give us the strength through your word and the power of your Holy Spirit that we will remain faithful to you through these challenging days and that we may help others also to remain faithful in facing difficult times. We pray that you help us to be prepared and keep watching for the coming of Jesus, our Lord. In the precious name of Jesus, our living Savior, we pray. Hallelujah. Amen.